Next up, we have a 1998 Honda Civic that has a charging system issue. It already has a new alternator, <clears throat> a new fuse box, and it's still not charging. In, the, in this case, the first thing I would look for is a charging light, a battery light. And turn the key on, I'm not seeing one. So you turn the key on, start it up, check engine lights on, and the battery light is supposed to be that third one in the top row, right above the check engine light. So key on. So it should be right next to the oil light. Uh, let's pull up a wiring diagram and see what could possibly be the issue, you know, why the light's not turning on, and just to get an overview of this uh, charging system. All right, back to BBB Industries. Uh, so here is our charging system diagram. It's two pages. Okay, so there is our alternator with a built-in voltage regulator and it has let's see here powertrain or engine control module so it is controlled by the PCM I think <laughs> well it's tied into the PCM in any case then we have this electrical load detector unit that is in our fuse box and then we have a fuse right here that feeds the voltage regulator and also see so branches off go to the next page right there it feeds our charging system indicator light which is then tied into you see it comes here integrated control unit and then it goes over there the white and blue wire back to page one, back to the voltage regulator. Okay, so the fact that we're not charging and our battery light's not coming on, that's the fuse I want to check first. And so it's fuse 15 in the under dash fuse and relay box. So let's locate that and get our test light out. All right, so we got our trusty test light connected through a power probe adapter to the cigarette lighter. That's always uh, usually <laughs> a reliable ground and power, so our test light works. Let's go down to the fuses and see if that fuse 15 is hot in on or start. So I'm going to turn the key on. I'm going to find fuse 15. Let's see here. Let's see if they're numbered. Yep, they are numbered. And fuse 15 looks like a 10 amp fuse. Hmm. Well, let's check it. Let's see, fuse 15. That guy right there. Got no, no power there. Okay, we got power on that side no power on that side beautiful power no power that is a problem let's pop that 10 amper out and uh, can just try a new fuse or if it blows again we're gonna have to find that short to ground all right so fuse 15 10 amp let's pull that guy out and just see what happens we put a new 7.5 amp fuse 7.5 amp we're replacing it with the correct amperage right there so now let's see if our oh our battery light came on hooray now let's uh, get a meter on the battery and see if this guy charges and guys, guess what I found on the floor? 
blown 7.5 amp fuse. Boom. So something did cause this to go to go bad. Now well, let's start up and see. Battery lights out. Everything is definitely brighter. Turn the engine off. Key on. Yep, there's our battery light. So let's get a let's get a meter on the battery. Car's running. 14.3. Beautiful. So now the question remains: what blew the fuse? Now keep in mind they replaced the alternator. They replaced the fuse box with the ELD unit. Either of those things could have blown the fuse. So the only thing we can do is wiggle some harnesses and I don't know, like you give the car away and see if it blows again. If it does, then we'll go further. But at this point, since the parts that they replaced could have caused the fuse to blow, it's not worth uh, you know spending hours on it if the problem isn't even there anymore. So that's, uh, I guess that's it for this one, nice and quick. Uh, sometimes the wiring diagram is all you need for, for a good diagnosis. All right guys, I'll catch you on the next one, bye-bye. All right, I just called the boss and he said, I'm not done with the Civic. He said, he, he knows why that fuse is blowing, that 7.5 amp alternator fuse. Uh, if you look under the en engine, or at the engine, he tells me that there's a harness that runs under the intake manifold and it rubs on some kind of bracket and that actually shorts out, shorts out that exact wire. So we might have to jack the car up and look for look for that problem or we can kind of feel give it the good old reach around move right and uh, see if we can blow that fuse and look at our meter while the car's running see if our uh, you know alternator stops charging all right we've got the car securely jacked up on a jack stand start it up okay Get on our yoga mat, do some Pilates. So we're at 14.3. And this harness. So let's see here. Get some lighting in here. It's gonna be a tough shot. There's the brace. Intake manifold support brace, I guess. The big metal metal thing. I gotta be careful not to get my hands caught in the belt. Let me uh, reposition you guys. How about that? Those exhaust pipes. Okay. So there's the harness. There's our alternator. TYC. So that those control wires are wrapped up in the harness. So let's see we can wiggle the harness and I'm gonna let you watch the voltmeter and see if this alternator shuts down. to use two hands here if it drops out I'll show you where the problem is and if it doesn't then there's no problem I don't know that harness looks in perfect shape I couldn't find any rub points We're still charging just fine at 14.3 volts so you know we checked we checked a possible known culprit but I don't see any problem so we're gonna let this one go thanks all for watching guys that was a little bonus footage Alright, so uh, on the Honda Civic with the charging problem, 
I couldn't find where the harness was rubbing on the bracket. Uh, I thought we were done. So Keith is like, it has to be rubbing on the bracket. That's why the fuse is blowing. So he took a look at it, and sure enough, he was right once again. This wire right here, coming from that 7.5 amp fuse, right there, alternator fuse, black and yellow wire feeds our voltage regulator. So somewhere right here, it uh, was rubbing on that bracket that supports the intake manifold. And I'll show you right now under the car where that is. And he said the fix is, just leave that bracket off. It serves no purpose. So I'm gonna go, go with that. Um, we're gonna patch up that wire, take the bracket off, and call this one fixed. Let's go to the car. All right, so here we are. Oh, he forgot his, uh, his light here. Let me give that back to him. So, let's see. Here is that bracket. It was kind of bolted on right there and once the bracket is out of the way let's try to get a nice shot of this right there you see the green crusties on that black and yellow wire where it was rubbing on the bracket come on focus 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 yep so right there so we're gonna Separate those wires out, see how much the damage is. If uh, we can just get away with some liquid electrical tape and uh, wrap that all up in regular electrical tape, and we're just gonna remove this. Let's see, zoom out. We're gonna remove this stupid bracket completely because he said that he's had a, a friend who drove 200,000 miles without the bracket and nothing happened. So. We're going to eliminate the cause of the wiring damage. Alright, I got our culprit wire out of the way. You can see a little copper right there, but it, otherwise it's in good shape and only one wire was damaged. So we're just going to put some electrical tape and regular tape and call it a fix. Alright, final shot of the repair liquid electrical tape and then I wrap the whole harness in fresh black good electrical tape this brand right here scotch you can get it at Walmart don't get the cheap stuff in the automotive aisle that stuff does not work very well so let's uh, start her up make sure she charges Make sure our fuse isn't blown again. Alright. So if our battery light is on, it is not on, so that fuse is blown. So we need a new fuse again. Alrighty, try again. Battery lays on. Sweet. Awesome. So that's it. That fuse did blow for a reason. Good thing uh, Keith gave me the tip that that uh, wire just rubs on the intake manifold support bracket. Apparently you can just leave it off and drive without it and that problem will never happen again. And I think this is a common issue for, he said, 1998 to 2000 Honda Civics. So, there you go. Uh, so this video is a little longer than uh, initially planned, so it was diagnosis and finding what caused that fuse to blow. Cool. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.